Thank you all for joining me. And on behalf of the entire RUAA Scarlet Council, we want to welcome you to our conversation today. The Scarlet Council is a student group of the Rutgers University Alumni Association and Foundation who seek to inspire today's students to be engaged Rutgers alumni of tomorrow. For those of you watching, I want to first introduce our two alumni guests for this discussion. First, we have Jim Savage, class of 1971 and what is now referred to as SEBS. He is the current class of 1971 president. We also have Kendall Hall, class of 1988 and what is now referred to as SAS. She is the current president of the Rutgers African American Alumni Alliance. This year, Rutgers University is celebrating its 254th birthday on November 10th, also known as Charter Day. Birthdays are a time of reflection and celebration. Because 2020 has been a year of epic and historic proportions, we thought that for Charter Day this year, we would reflect on how Rutgers has prioritized decisions that created a more inclusive space for students and alumni. We have you both here today to talk specifically about the newest addition to the Voorhees Mall on the College Avenue campus of Rutgers University in New Brunswick, and that is the Paul Robeson Plaza. The open air plaza features eight black granite panels detailing the story of Robeson's life. Both the class of 1971 in honor of its 50th milestone anniversary and the Rutgers African American Alumni Alliance together raised more than $245,000 to make this idea a reality. The plaza was unveiled on April 12, 2019, and is now a prominent space on campus for students and alumni to recognize the impact and value Paul Robeson brought to our student and alumni community. Thank you. And with that being said, let's jump into some questions. So first, tell us about Rutgers alumnus Paul Robeson. Kendall, you want to start with this? Um, for me, Paul Robeson um, graduated in 1919. Uh, he is a uh, graduate of Somerville High School, for which I am also a graduate of Somerville High School, so it truly was an honor for me to be a part of this project. Uh, when I think of Paul Robeson, I think of a courageous man of conviction, a uh, very talented man who shared his gifts, and he lived a life of purpose. And so there's many adjectives to describe him, but I think foremost, it is a man of conviction and someone who actually understood his purpose and he lived it um, until the day that he died. How true. Jim, did you wanna say anything? Yeah, I can uh, add that uh, Paul Robeson uh, was a champion of civil rights, human rights, uh, the labor movement, uh, he was uh, a bold and courageous man who uh, clearly stood up to the American government during a period of time where they were trying, not only did they take away his passport, but they took away his means to make a living. But even with all of that, he stood strong. Uh, he never gave up. He never gave in. And uh, he ultimately uh, prevailed. And the fact that we have Paul Robeson Monument here uh, is uh, that's a credit to his perseverance and um, uh, we're happy that it happened. Wonderful. Now, what drove you both to lead the fundraising effort to create the Paul Robeson Plaza at Rutgers? Well, I'll, I'll share with you uh, what happened with me. I could never figure out why Paul Robeson was not more visible on the Rutgers New Brunswick campus considering his prominence. And um, what drove me to come up with the idea of Paul Robeson Plaza and this level of tribute was when I saw the plaque of the 1987 group of inductees to the Rutgers Hall of Distinguished Alumni. And they always have uh, a, a brief set of words as to why that person qualified for the Hall of Distinguished Alumni. And for Paul Robeson, who was one of the first inductees back in 87, it said actor and singer. And Paul Robeson is so much more than that. And I said, if this is hanging in Winant's Hall and Paul Robeson Hall of Distinguished Alumni, and this is how Rutgers reacts to his, all of his qualities and all of his uh, efforts, that he was an actor and a singer, you know, there's no question he was a very talented man in that regard, but there was so much more to him and so much was missing that 
with the plaza, his full story is told and it's public and available for everyone to see. Um, and from our perspective, from the Rutgers African American Alumni Alliance, I first heard uh, Jim's presentation, I believe it was the first time he actually shared it publicly, was in 2014. And um, for me, usually when we have our Hallmark event, at the Hall of Fame, I would, I would share, um, can you see beyond what you see right now for I see greatness? And the greatness that I saw far off, for me, it moved in closer when I heard about the vision of the Parobson Plaza. And again, because I'm a Somerville uh, graduate, it meant even more to me. So we offered up assistance. And I heard his presentation two years later and, and did the same thing. And, and several months later, uh, we were in talks to do a crowdfunding campaign on behalf of the class of 1971. And I believe it was the most successful crowdfunding campaign ever. So we were just thrilled to be a part of it and collaborating with the class of 1971 was it was a beautiful thing for uh, two different segments of the of the alumni community to come together um, to be able to um, help the class of 1971 present this gift and it truly is a gift um, to all of Rutgers University to have the Parobson Plaza um, on our campus. So we're forever grateful to the class of 1971 and to Jim and to the late Clyde White for making sure um, that we are a part of their great vision. That's amazing. So how does it feel to have this idea come into fruition? Well, I would say that this has been the experience of a lifetime in the achievement of a lifetime. And while the plaza itself uh, is something that will stand the test of time for all the world to see, Equally as important as the plaza was the fact that uh, Paul Robeson Plaza was really the motivation behind the year-long celebration of Paul Robeson's centennial of graduating, which was huge for Rutgers to do. Mm -hmm. And also, it, we have reached we reached out to Susan Robeson, Paul Robeson's granddaughter, and uh, as part of Paul Robeson Plaza way back in 2016. And it took us a long time to communicate with her and to gain her confidence. But uh, once she really understood what we were trying to do, it was a beautiful relationship. And she has since become part of the Rutgers family. And well, she should be. She was estranged for a long time, she and her father, uh, Paul Robeson Jr. But now Susan is very much a part of the Rutgers family. And Susan tells me, that she is in communication with Dr. Holloway. So that's wonderful. That's um, great. I just like to share, you see the, the panel behind Jim, the global freedom fighter and uh, peace activist. I was so excited to, um, it took six months to do, um, but we were able to get in contact with the International Longshoremen and Warehouse Union out of San Francisco. And that picture is Paul Robeson standing on the docks of Oakland. So we were able to um, make it possible for them to get a paver on the plaza. So it just so ties in um, the contributors um, to the panel. And another um, person that we were able to uh, contribute to our campaign is Shirley Ralph. She's an actress, actress and activist. And she was the first female graduate of Rutgers College. So um, it is truly a prominent place and it allowed, you know, the, the was the slogan of uh, Rutgers, Jersey Roots Global Reach. We were able to connect with people from all over the world. We even had someone from, uh, I believe it was Europe, who uh, sent in a letter of success and, and congratulations to us on the day of the groundbreaking. So it was just six degrees of separation was um, the name um, of the day for this project. And again, we're so grateful to the class of 1971 for allowing us to be a part of their platform. That's wonderful. So what can students do now and as Rutgers alumni to follow in Paul Robeson's footsteps to help make positive strides involving issues pertaining to social justice and human civil rights? So to the students and the alumni, I would say like Paul, live your life with passion and purpose as mm -hmm. he did, uh, like Paul, be the voice for the voiceless. And there's mm -hmm. an old saying, lead, follow, or get out of the way. <laughs> Paul Robeson was a leader 
And uh, we can't expect everyone to be a leader, certainly not a leader like Paul, but you can make your contribution, you can participate, you can become engaged and just have a passion for accomplishment and seeing something through. No matter how daunting the task, mm -hmm. if you rally the support and stay with it, you can see your vision come to fruition. Yes. I don't think I have much to add to that, but I think also you should um, listen to understand. Um, he was a man of empathy. And so um, walk in your passion. Um, one of the things that I think that you can do right now as Rutgers students, um, the university just published an equity audit. Um, so there's, there's areas where you can learn more about how you can help to make a difference, how you can advocate um, for um, policy changes, how you as a student uh, can make a difference while you are actually a student. Um, but again, thank you for this opportunity. Um, as young people, um, you, we, don't have, we don't have students, uh, we cannot have alumni without students. And hopefully with this project, it'll allow you to sort of think outside the box when you're, you're looking to give back to the university, think outside the box, because I believe this was a think outside the box vision it took a whole lot of effort. I believe Jim is not saying it took them over five years for this to come to fruition. And we're just grateful um, that we were, be, we were able, uh, we were given the opportunity to be a part of uh, restoring the legacy of Paul Robeson here in Rutgers College. Um, excuse me, it's no longer Rutgers College, Rutgers University. Absolutely, right. Leilana, can, can, I'd like to read something just in closing, something that inspired me as I was doing my initial research for the project and our, um, our presentation to Rutgers to gain approval. And there was uh, several different committees we had to go before. And this is something that was spoken by the late Dr. Edward Blaustein, the president of Rutgers at the time. He made this statement in 1972 at the dedication of Paul Robeson Campus Center in Newark, New Jersey. And what he said was this, today, after a period of neglect by this university, of which I am ashamed, we return to Paul Robeson some small portion of that great honor he brought us. And I thought mm -hmm. those were very bold words, acknowledging an absolute wrong that was committed, and he was looking to set it straight. And since then, uh, things have come a long way, but there's still more that has to be done. Programs and uh, uh, doctrine and policies. A, a lot more needs to be done in the spirit of Robeson and Kendall and I are looking to be involved in that process. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Jim, for um, sharing those words. And thank you both again for your time today and for all the hours you spent working towards this great achievement. The significance of how Rutgers joined forces with alumni to support the prominent display and recognition of the impact Black students have on the Rutgers community is certainly one to remember. Happy birthday, Rutgers. Happy birthday, Rutgers. Happy birthday. And many more. <laughs> right. Thank you. Thank you.